Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown. And I want to um, give my analysis of the press conference today uh, done on the Nicola Bully case. Um, and let me start with this. I am highly critical quite often about press conferences. And anybody who knows me knows that. Uh, but in the United States, I've been highly critical of the, the Delphi uh, press conferences um, uh, because I'm like, some uh, someone comes out um, working on, someone working on the case, police chief, whatever, on many of these cases, detectives, and they get very emotional. They say things like, we're gonna get you. and. They, just stuff to me that is not helpful, nonsensical, doesn't help for the investigation, doesn't help get the public to be confident. Because what I believe they normally need to do is have a spokesperson, a spokesperson that comes out and gives bullet points, boom, 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 boom. And then the bullet points they want the public to know about the investigation, like the, the victim, the time this occurred, uh, the evidence that they're willing to put forth uh, what they want the public to look for, what tips they want from the public. Be very specific so that they don't get a bunch of nonsense, the psychics calling in and people calling in on oh, my ex-boyfriend. I think it's him because he's weird. Uh, they don't want that because they're inundated with tips. So they want something very specific so they can move the case forward. So I like bullet points and not a lot of emotion. And um, so I'm highly critical of a lot of press conferences, which I think are not done properly. So when I heard about this press conference today, I went to see how it was going because um, this is a very, this in this whole case, uh, the public is very volatile. Um, they seem to be very angry. They seem to be very frustrated with the police. So I was very interested in how this press conference would go. And let me tell you here right up front, this is my opinion. This is one of the best press conferences by the police I have ever seen. And I know there's a lot of you who are now utterly shocked. And I know I'm going to get a lot of angry responses. I thought it was exceptional. All right. Why do I say this? All right. Uh, we have the lead detective here, Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith of the Lancashire Police. She's been handling this case. She's the top dog in this case. And she's here, which concerned me when I saw the beginning of this uh, press conference. We have this gentleman who was, just, who was just giving the basic information. And then we have the detective come out. And in the comments, because I looked at them quite quickly because I was viewing this on uh, YouTube, I saw the comments immediately. Uh, they called her angry. They called her defensive. They called her an idiot. They said she had bare arms, which is the reason I wore these, this, these lace sleeves. So you can now comment on that. And you can comment how angry and defensive and, and what an old hag I am. This is the kind of stuff I saw coming at this particular detective. And it's an interesting thing because uh, in my, in my um, analysis of the case so far, where I talked about the different theories, I'll, the link is below, I got those kind of comments, vicious comments, absolutely vicious. And it's interesting, those type of comments usually are thrown at women far often than are thrown at men. And so we're not so, some part of our society needs to improve. Um, but she says, I'm reading this article here, detective, le detective leading the Nicola Bully search says online speculation is shocking and worse she has seen in 29 years. And I will agree with that because the comments I've gotten on my previous video, I've had to block an incredible amount of people because of the viciousness. And, saying that I, you know, I'm a fraud. I don't know. I'm not a profiler that I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I never, why did I waste two hours of my life? Because you just, you talked about the theories and you didn't give even a proper analysis. And that's what they're saying about her. So I was very interested when I came in seeing those comments is the same thing happening to her as to me. Is this just a lot of vicious nonsense or, you know, is this one of these press conferences? I'm going to go, uh, they should have had somebody else out there. No. I was impressed. There's only one area of this press conference I think probably should have been left out, and I will get to that. But let me talk about what she talked about and why I liked her. First of all, I did not see any anger from her. I didn't see defensiveness. What I saw was a very, uh, she was very measured in her words. 
She spoke very clearly. She gave all the details from the beginning of the investigation as to what they have been doing all along, what evidence they had that they could give to the public, how they've been looking at that evidence, what their theories were and, and are. I found, I didn't see defensiveness. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised she wasn't more defensive with all the nastiness that's been pushed on her. She, I, I was very impressed, um, very impressed. Now, let me start with what she said in the beginning about the theory issue. There's a lot of people who claim that she, oh, the police just immediately went to Nicola fell on the water and uh, that's it. They don't have any other theory. They didn't bother with anything else. They didn't bother to look at an abduction. They didn't bother, you know, and that's people's number one thing um, on the internet. Actually, they have two major uh, theories on the internet. One is she was abducted. That's the number one. And the second one is her husband, her partner did something to her. All right. She very clearly explained they looked at three basic theories. And I brought these up during my, uh, my analysis. I had actually five. Uh, she said she was talking about abduction, uh, a nickel running off, and she talked about her falling into the water and how they've looked at all three of those. And with the evidence they had in the beginning of the investigation that they investigated, they had as their top, their top theory. And by the way, she very clearly said her top, top one, not the only one. And I said the same thing in my, my, my uh, analysis. I've looked, I don't know all the evidence yet. I'm not on the investigative team. I can't tell you exactly what's going on everywhere. Uh, but what I see now, the top evidence is leaning toward this. Now, that doesn't mean you don't investigate other avenues. It just means you might have, right at the moment, believe that this is the most likely. She said the most likely she fell into the water because of the evidence, which puts her right at that, which puts her at the bench, which puts no other people around her. She has seen no other evidence of an uh, of a third party involved. And I agree, I had, didn't see it either. Uh, the location she was in was not near a road. So when somebody's abducted, usually if they're walking their dog or whatever, they're going to be abducted in a place where somebody can easily grab them and throw them into a vehicle. This was not that place. Somebody would literally have to pull a gun out and parade her across a field or down a path where there may be other people. And it's very, very unlikely. So since she says we have no evidence she ever left the field and they've checked many, many CCTVs, not that it's perfect. She admits that not that it's perfect. There could be some kind of missing something, but they had witnesses on the field. They had CCTV. And so far they have no evidence that she left the fields. They have no evidence of a third party. I agree with this. And this, I've said this from the beginning, it's a very unlikely place for her to be abducted. Now it's not an unlikely place. Hmm. It's a, during the day, it's not a very likely place for a, for example, a serial killer to grab her, pull her, into some bushes or into the trees and rape and murder her. That could happen. Usually that happens at dawn or dusk in a place that has a lot of people milling about and walking their dogs. It's not, this is not a good place with dog walkers to really rape and murder somebody right there. Um, so, and in the middle of the day. So unlikely, especially since there were other people who saw Nicola there, they saw her. So there were people around. So a, 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 a serial predator, it's really not a great day, a great day and time to do this. All right. So, and her body's not been found right there, which if that was what happened, she would just be found in the bushes. But her body hasn't been found in any of the land area. So abduction is unlikely. Now, she said it's not that should, they've set, taken it completely off the table, possible, probable, no. The probability goes over toward the river. All right, she said that. Um, she did not talk about too much about the possibility of um, Nicola running off. I did mention that in my discussion below, simply because her partner said, had some, I thought was unusual language when, when the, um, the journalist had asked him, what would you like to say to her? And he didn't say, hang in, honey, we're coming for you. We're going to save you, whatever. 
he said, please come home. So that just led me to wonder, did they, was there, were there some problems where he thought she could have run off? But then again, maybe the reason he was saying that was because his only hope is that she did run off. Because if she went to the river, she's not alive. If she was abducted, she's probably not alive. So her, his own real hope for her returning would be that she ran off. Maybe that's why he's saying it. Maybe he's just, he's just expressing his only hope. But if I were investigating this case, I'd look into her anything about her, uh, the, her the victimology, if you want to call it that, uh, in this case, that she might have some reason to want to leave. Although, and then in that case, is it possible she staged her leaving by leaving the phone on the bench and leaving the dog there and, and find, and she knew somehow to get out of there without being seen, but so far it hasn't been seen. So it's not highly likely again, not my top theory either. It's a possibility. I would keep it on the table, but, Oh, I want to mention something else about the abduction thing. Everybody's going on about, Oh, this is a staged thing that the abductor left the, the phone on the bench as, as, as a, decoy. And this, I think, was originally said by the guy who did the river searches, and he's not a profiler or a detective, so he uses this 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 idea, and everybody's been jumping on it. And I'm like, it's ridiculous. If she were abducted, that he's not staging anything. <laughs> you know, he, he would be more likely to throw the, just throw the, grab the phone, turn it off, chuck it, smash it, throw it in a river, you know, but staging it by putting it there isn't, it's just not something that's likely. Uh, could she have been abducted from that spot and the phone was just there? Yes. But we have no evidence she was abducted. Um, there is also people going on as saying that the partners involved, he did, he abducted her or did something. <laughs> Folks, there's tons of evidence that he, that he was at home. There's evidence people saw her out there. There's no evidence he was ever there. So this is, this is nonsense. So what the detective said, was all very rational. She laid out, this is our top theory. From the beginning, the evidence pointed to her going in the river. That's why we worked so hard on that. But we have examined all CCTV. We're taking in tips. We're doing this. We're doing that to make sure that they're not missing something. And some freak thing happened. Somehow, Nicola got past CCTV by herself or with an abductor and didn't go into the river. Maybe. And she's leaving it open. She very carefully stated everything, very pleasantly, very clearly. I do not know why anybody has any issue with it, except they want to believe 100% she didn't go into the river, and therefore the police are lying. They didn't do their job. They're scum and all this. Uh, one other, th So the only thing I want to point out, the only thing that bothered me in the entire press conference was the issue about what she talked about, vulnerabilities. Uh, that they had analyzed the victimology of Nicola Bully and had noted vulnerabilities that put her at a high risk for walking, for, for whatever happened where she was at. Now, the problem we have here, she said, we're not going to go into the vulnerabilities because this is private. I guess what her partner might have said, what her family might have said. That's the only thing I kind of wish they left out because this has now opened uh, a Pandora's box. What would high risk vulnerabilities be? And they would not go there. Uh, let me let me throw some out. Uh, this is not so you can go running off with it, folks. This is just because if I were investigating, I'd be looking for things like, would she have a reason to be running off? And that could be some psychological problems. If the partner said, we our marriage has been going well, uh, she's been very stressed out, she's been acting weird, those kind of things could be, she could become a vulnerable person because she was unstable. You know, unstable either about her own self or the or the or the marriage, uh, or whatever's going on in her life. That's one possibility. Another possibility would be, um, let's see, that she always walked that exact path, so that people would know where she would be at what time. That she dropped the kids off, took the doggy, and off she went down there. If somebody were stalking her, that could make her vulnerable as a high risk victim. And that could support everyone's abduction theory. So they looked at that because in the beginning, when they trying to determine whether she was low risk or high risk, that may have put her in a high risk category. So they definitely wanted, in, along with the river, to look at a possible abduction. Another thing would be, uh, as far as the river goes, did she have some medical problem? 
a medical problem that could cause her to become, uh, I don't know, to lose her balance, for example, or whatever. I have no clue, but something that could have made her careless or made her unable to handle the, the terrain or something like that. Um, behaviors with a dog. Maybe she liked to chase the dog. Maybe the dog liked to run around. She would chase it. And they thought maybe that was a vulnerability. I do not know. I just wish I'd left that out just because I just know by saying that um, I understand that. And I'm not going to go off on the, some wild goose chase and down rabbit holes because of it. But I'm going to guarantee you that's going to set the whole Internet off. And I think that was the only error I saw during this press conference. And I just wish the Internet would get control of themselves. So anyway, that's what I think. I think this was a very well done press conference. I do not see any problem with the police's handling of the case. I am not there on behind the scenes to watch every issue of this to see whether they were perfect or not. But I do not uh, detect massive deception and cover up and all this kind of crap that people are going on about. Um, and it is ha harmful uh, to the investigation in the sense that they have to focus on trying to find her. And I think they're doing that. Uh, it, but, you know, with all the, the, the nastiness and anger, it's just it's just and all these crazy theories out there that aren't supported by evidence. And I'm seeing them in my comments below my other video. Crazy stuff. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with the evidence. You're just making stuff up. Stop doing that. <laughs> you know, first of all, my, I have an educational channel. I'm just trying to teach people how things work, how you would how a profiler would analyze, how a detective would analyze. That's it. I'm not trying to solve this case. That's their job, not me. And it's not your job either, you folks on the internet. You're not here to solve the case unless you literally have information to give the police that is factual and useful. All of your, all of this nonsense going on and all these YouTubers going out there and throwing out stuff every day, boom, 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 because they can get their subscriber rate up and make a lot of money. It's not okay. That's not, you know, it's not okay. And, and please, I agree with her. Please stop. Please stop. Anyway, that's my that's my take on this particular uh, this press conference. I was very pleased. And anybody who knows me knows that's probably a fairly rare statement for me to make. But uh, that is my statement. And again, if you are new to my channel, you may subscribe. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Um, and put your comments below. But I will be blocking all the comments of the crazy people. All right. And all the nasty comments. I will be doing that as much as possible. I want a proper discussion a reasonable discussion uh, where we learn from each other. And um, and other than that, don't even bother to comment, you know, because <laughs> it's not doing anybody any good. So anyway, thank you for being here. I very much appreciate it. Bye-bye.